Good morning. Today we are going to learn the pilot modeling in the proportional integral derivative um, modeling and we will apply it to the three degrees of freedom helicopter model. If you remember, we learned about the open loop and the closed loop controller. In an open loop, uh, one has to input something in a system and gets an output from the system. There is a disturbance which is acting on the system. In a closed loop, we have to include a negative feedback to control the dynamic behavior of the system. So, the system is reacting to the disturbance that uh, has been uh, acting on the system. In this way, one of the first examples of feedback controls was applied uh, to the gunnery azimuth tracking task in 1947 by Tustin. If you look in this picture, you have a gun and a human which is trying to reach the target. There are three variables that we can define with, um, with respect to a reference line of sight. We can define a target line of sight, CT angle, a gun line of sight, angle CG, and the error, which is the difference between the first two. The control problem of the gunnery would look like this. We have the desired value, CT, and that is, we know the human operator that is going to achieve that, and the gun, which is the plant which needs to be controlled. The output is the value of the uh, azimuth tracking task of the gun. The human operating is always correcting the error, which is the difference between the azimuth gun and the azimuth target. Using only the error for the human is the so-called compensatory behavior. In reality, the human is using also other information. For example, is using the uh, target line of sight, uh, CG, so the input information. And this we call it the pursued behavior. For the moment, we are going to assume in our PID controlly, controller only the compensatory behavior of the human. Why do we decide to learn a PID controller? Because PID controllers are everywhere. They are simple and they can be tuned for optimal performance. They can be used in many applications. They are used in more than 95% of closed loop industrial uh, processes and they can be tuned without extensive background in control. So in a PID controller structure, we have a reference value or a desired value, the controller and the plant and the system output. And we are always feeding back the system output to the value of the reference in the and we measure the always the error. Let's try to apply now the PID controller in order to keep hovering in our six degrees of freedom model. For this we are going to do the followings. If you remember <clears throat> the helicopter open loop flight we applied a disturbance from a hover in the second 0 0.5 to 1 and we applied a cyclic pitch of 1 degree to the helicopter model. We saw that the helicopter is unstable and we are building the forward velocity U and the pitch attitude of the helicopter. How to stabilize the helicopter model? First we are going to include the P controller. For this, we are going to say that we wish to hover, so our wished pitch attitude will be always zero. We add a K controller to the cyclic pitch. And this is the helicopter model, and we are going to take as output the pitch attitude. 
The speech attitude will be always fitted back to the initial reference value so that we know what is the error which has to be corrected by the controller. If we apply the speed controller to the helicopter model, for example, to the case that we simulated and we controller enters in action after 15 seconds, we would see that the U and the theta F would go to a stable value. Well, it means that the P controller is stabilizing the helicopter model. This is indeed the case and we will see that actually we can have a static stability but we can have also dynamic instability. So we go to a kind of a stability value but we are always keeping around this, uh, going around this static value. So we are oscillating around the static value. <clears throat> For example, if we build a pitch attitude up we need to input the cyclic pitch, theta c, and move the stick forward. And as we are building the stick forward, the theta f, the pitch attitude, goes down. So we need to input theta c back, and the stick has to go backwards. Therefore, we are going to add a d action. So this is the d controller that we are going to add extra to the uh, helicopter model. The D action, the derivative action, is used to provide anticipative action. This is the anticipative action that we are going to add. So, the as output, we have the pitch rate, which is now going to be fitted back to the input controller and theta C and we are going to get this D action of the controller. If we are going to plot again the simulation results, we would see that if the PD controller is inputting from the 15 second of flight, we are going indeed to stabilize quicker in horizontal velocity and in pitch attitude. However, what you do not see really good on the graph is that we have an improved pilot model, but we still have a problem. It can be that we have drifted away from the hovering point, so we are not going to the pitch attitude zero. And we can also have a forward velocity which is not zero. So we go to, st to a stable value, but is not the one that we wished. So, like this, if the Q the pitch rate is higher than zero, we have to input stick forward and afterwards as the um, Q is building up, we need to take the stick back in order to get uh, that value to the uh, theta F zero, to the pitch attitude. You would see better this static error that you obtain, for example, when we are saying that we are going to uh, uh, go 5 degrees nose down desired attitude from the hover. Imagine that we apply the PD controller that we said, but now we want to go to a 5 degrees of value uh, forward uh, attitude. You would see even better that using this model from the 15 second of the simulation, um, you would see that indeed we build forward velocity, but then we go not to the wished uh, pitch attitude of 5 degrees, but to a kind of 1 degrees of pitch attitude. So, it is the so-called that we are not capable of achieving the static um, the, the desired value due to a static error. How to understand this static error? Now, if you would plot the pitch attitude theta f as a function of the theta c, the cyclic pitch, you would have two lines. This is the uh, heli what the helicopter is doing in order to stay trimmed. So, you need more pitch attitude and more cyclic for every trimmed position. And this is the line of what the pilot is doing, which is k theta f minus theta f wished. 
the idea is that we want to go to the that I have wished with the pilot, but the helicopter model is having a kind of static error and is going to a different equilibrium point. So we need to correct this equilibrium point in the P controller. We need actually to add an E controller. An E controller needs to eliminate constantly the proportional offset that is uh, introduced by the P controller. So we need to add a kind of integral from this value of the P controller and to build uh, constantly to change the input of the controller until we reduce the error to zero. In this way, the PID controller for the cyclic pitch using the E action would move the line of the pilot with a static error so that we get the theta f wished that we desire. Now, if you understood this principle of the E controller, it means that we build a PID controller for cyclic pitch, for example, to keep the hovering flight or to go 5 degrees uh, nose down attitude in the way that we showed here. So we keep the theta f wished by inputting a cyclic stick as much needed as to counteract these values, to the counteract the, and the Q action is added, the D in the derivative in order to an anticipate the controller. A PID controller actually requires two integration levels for the human. This is done actually unconsciously by the pilot's spinal cord and requires training to keep the hovering point. The conscious part of the maneuver, so it is the part that requires that we pitch the helicopter, helicopter to a certain value, theta f wished, and it is done consciously by the pilot brain. So we have represented the consciously part and we have represented this in a PID controller, the unconscious part of what the pilot is doing. If we have that, we have the controller. This is the PID controller is characteristics to an acceleration control system. In an acceleration control system, you see here, imagine that I would like to move a ball from this position to a wished position here on a plate. To achieve that position, we have to move down the plate and as the acceleration is building to move back horizontally and move it back uh, and move higher the plate in order that at the end of the plate we achieved the uh, zero acceleration and zero velocity of the ball. It is actually that we are integrating two levels and we need to, in our case, for the helicopter, we need to go uh, to a pitch attitude by inputting the uh, longitudinal cyclic. So we need to give input and to take back the input in the way that you see in this graph. Therefore, the helicopter, it has the characteristics of, the, uh, of an acceleration control system. In a rate control system, if you would have again the ball that we want to uh, go from this position to a wished position at the end of the plate, you would have to move the plate to build velocity and then to move the plate horizontally so that we achieved the, uh, the end position. So, in this case, we would have to go with the helicopter one level of integration for, um, in order to achieve a desired pitch. So we need to give input and just uh, take to the neutral position. This is the ray control system. If you compare the helicopter and the fixed wings, normally in a helicopter, the controlling of the pitch angle, it requires an acceleration control system. So we need to move forward the cyclic stick 
keep it for a while, move totally on the opposite side and then going back to the neutral position. In an aircraft, the attitude control system is much simpler. In order to achieve a certain pitch angle of the aircraft, we need just to give a constant pitch angle, so to move the stick forward. In an aircraft, the roll angle, controlling the roll angle, it is a rate control system because I need to move the cyclic, to move the stick to one position, keep it there, and then go to the neutral position. We can compare the helicopter also to the case of a car. Um, in a car, if we are uh, on a normal road, we need one level of integration. So we need just to keep the velocity. Uh, in When we are in a traffic jam, we are having a second order integration level. So the braking force and the gasoline will need two levels of integrations in order we need, we need to keep the distance that we have um, in, under control in order to uh, stay on the road. A helicopter pitch and roll controls in forward uh, flight are equivalent with a car in a traffic jam. This ends this lecture on the PID controller built for the helicopter model.